The curse is broken! Finally! Welcome to The Arrow Panel, episode 17. We'll talk about a moment about what that means after our introductions. I'm James McGarren, a.k.a. Buzzer. Roger Clark, at Roger Clark on Twitter. Dalton Runberg, uh, Blue Chow. And Jeff Lloyd, Fanga. And I'm also going to have to have everyone to do a drink check, because we got some, uh, some beverages all about here that Roger was kind enough to bring. There's a Daiso right next to the Dave & Buster's where we play. Yeah. It's weeaboo convenience. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's actually wonderful. Yeah. So I'm having a, a Tea's Tea, uh, black tea latte flavored, which is not quite as good as the Kirin brand uh, milk tea, but it's probably my second favorite. It's pretty good. Is that yeah. the same Kirin that makes the beer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's just yeah. a big drink company. Oh, that's bold. It's like a giant Zaibatsu kind of <laughs> yeah. corporation. A- Asahi's the same thing. Like, yeah. you go to Japan, you just see labels of Asahi on, like... Speaking everything. of which, I am going to go to Japan because I have my passport now. Oh, great. Yes. Congrats. Congrats. I got it in, like, a week. It was amazing. Yeah, it's not that. It's it's so not an issue. It's really easy I thought, to get your passport. I, okay. thought it, I thought it was going to be an issue. No, so it's I'm, ver- I'm very relieved. Well, first, mm-hmm. what's your drink? Oh, I have a Tea's Tea Organic Ice steeped cold brew unsweetened pure and smooth green tea cold brewed with premium whole green tea leaves <gasps> <laughs> usd organic zero, it's new. <laughs> zero calories it's per new. bottle are you ready sorry i've got a lychee flavored calpico also known as calpis yes <laughs> delicious it's delicious a yogurt, yogurt flavored uh, soft drink and uh, i've got the lychee flavor yeah Lychee is probably my favorite uh, Calpico flavor what, besides original. What even is lychee? It's a fruit. It's kind of like a. The taste is kind of like a cross between a pear and a grape. Uh, and I, the I, texture I... is like an eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. But it's good. It's good, actually. Jeff, what are you working with? I have the same thing as James, so I'm not going to go over it again. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. All right, so anyway, we talked about how the curse has been broken, and the curse that we're talking about, of course, is uh, PFCing Dead End Groove Radar Special. Deggers is what we'll call it from now on, uh, which is actually the turn uh, during the tournament, the last tournament, uh, the song that I lost uh, to. That's a pretty epic song which to is, lose on. Yeah, I mean, I if, you're gonna, so too, if you're yeah. gonna lose on a song, that's the one to go out on. Oh yeah. Um, so Jeff, why don't you tell us what what is so special about this chart? Well, it's evaded PFCing for ten years now. That's the first like to give kind of context on how hard it is. So it came out in X, right? No, no, it came out Supernova 2. Oh, Supernova 2, even earlier. Yeah. So Remember that was... episode we did? Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> about the Supernova 2. He doesn't. <laughs> no. It's all a blur. <laughs> um, no, it's so it's uh, it's the Groove Radar special, so it's taking all... Like, it's basically trying to max out the Groove Radar in DDR, which is composed, comprised of, what, air, freeze, chaos, voltage, and... Stream. Stream, stream. yes. And, uh, and so you imagine a chart that tries to max those things out... And it's basically got to be hot garbage because <laughs> it, it can't do any one of those things. It has to do all of them. Yeah. Well, you should mention how there's other charts, too, that are specials. Yeah. 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 We so, also talked about that on the episode that you don't Yeah, remember. but maybe people haven't watched that. Yeah, episode. that's true. Yeah, Most yeah. So basically the, the kind of the, the gimmick here was that there was one song, classic DDR song, that was tied to each one of the Groove Radar elements. So, for example, you had, like, Dynamite Rave uh, Air Special. Jumps. Uh, just, yeah, just filled with jumps, right? Um, and then at the end, it was like the cul- it culminated into Dead End Groove Radar Special, which is uh, it was a 10 in Supernova 2. It was rated an 18 in the post-X world, which is, yes, uh, maybe should have been a 19. Depends on what you define as, you know, levels, passing versus PFCing or something. But um, nevertheless, very, very hard. Um, 16th note jumps at 190 BPM. <laughs> uh, some of the fun you'll encounter if you try to play this chart. You'll get... A, a few doubles. Just a few double steps. Uh, just, uh, more than a few. Uh, you get a lot of, uh... Yeah, you get, you get double steps in 16th runs at, at 190. When it's scrolling at 380 instead, uh, notes that are on... Notes that are supposed to be, uh blue but they're yellow instead like just everything is wrong with this chart (laughs) just slowdowns and yeah yeah. i mean it's an interesting take on dead end but it is and and i think the first time i saw this chart i uh, it's probably everybody's first response which is that fucked up garbage and i hate it and i never want to play it again and it sucks (laughs) Um, but if you think about it if you study it as as like an interesting chart uh you can kind of appreciate a little bit more and you yeah. reach the conclusion that it's, it's good, actually. <laughs> it's no, good, actually. Not, yeah. still not. Still not good. Well, actually, so uh, that, the reason why we're talking about this, uh, Chris Chike, I am Chris for Life, uh, PFC this recently, 34 perfects? 35. 35, 35 perfects? Yeah, after um, 
I wish we would see his play count. I'm pretty sure, you know, oh, he, hundreds. it's in the hundreds. He was yeah. trying it all night, uh, I think. Yeah, and he's been trying it for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have been trying it yeah. for a long time. And so that's what's crazy about this is that, like, multiple people have flagged this, like, yeah. gotten one great or, like, one miss in all sorts of different spots in the chart. And, like, people were, like, sort of convinced that, like, the song is programmed to not be PFC-able. Like, yeah. it was kind of the running joke, like, hence the curse. Because I think, like, what, Brosoni? It was uh, definitely the Brosoni, Little Matt, Kaze. Uh, those are for sure had one one grade on it. And mm-hmm. plus Chris, right? Um, there are probably a few others that, like... Did Fafems ever get, like, one miss? Yes, maybe? oh, yeah, Fafems, of course, yes. He got one grade. He was may, may have been one of the first people to get one grade on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but, like probably close to 10 people have gotten quite yeah. close to PFCing it and it's just like never happened for anyone who's keeping track i was not one of those people <laughs> i have a 985 on it <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't me uh yeah anyway what the reason why i brought up that video is because um if uh, so chris chike posted a, a youtube video I, I think it was on youtube maybe twitter and uh, of him playing the song, PFCing the song. And uh, I just thought it was very fascinating to watch that video because you can tell that he's developed kind of his own techniques for all these various... Because it's not a straightforward song at all. Yeah. Nobody would ever describe this chart as being straightforward. But he's got, like, certain parts where he's, you know, double-stepping and then other parts where he's crossing over. Yeah, I noticed then... that the crossovers uh, at the beginning, sort of, they're, like, sort of just fast crossovers. Yeah. He, like, just, like, sort of heel-toes them, like, brackets yeah. them rather than, He, like, he brackets like... those, but then he crosses over in other parts. Yeah, yeah, later. And then he also has, like, parts where he brackets things, you know, You bracket, bracket the is... jump. You can bracket some of the jumps. Yeah, so bracketing is hitting two panels with one foot. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so just, like, some... It, it, you can just tell that Chris has, like... Uh, thought about it a lot, and uh, he's kind of. De- I think each person probably brings their own technique to the to the song. Yeah, which is what, what makes it so fascinating. Yeah, some people try playing it on shuffle. Yeah, I don't, that's did, me. Yeah, that's me too. D- did he did he play it straight up or was that like on left or something? I'm pretty sure it was it was straight, right? I think it was straight. Yeah, it was just normal. No turn mod. I didn't actually watch the video. I trust that he did it. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched. The I video, can't confirm but... which turn mod. It was anyway, on. Yeah. I can look it, at the it, video for two it, seconds. It, I don't and, think it was on right. shuffle though. Yeah. Um. If but, they were crossovers, he'd probably... Yeah, but so, I mean, e- e- I think even somebody in KAC, when they had to play it, like, played it on shuffle or on a turn mod. Also me. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so, I played Dead End Groove Radar Special on a turn mod. It's one of the... Well, on shuffle specifically, which is the only chart I know of that is, at but, least in my opinion, significantly easier on shuffle than it is on any other turn mod. If you get the right shuffle. Uh... I I still think uh Oh well talk sorry, we're watching the chart right now. Oh no, he does play it on the turn mod. Is it on the left it must be on like left or right or something. Uh oh no 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 wait, no, this is this is normal, right? Hold I on. Did, it's fucked up garbage, you can't know. Yeah. Hold on, I, I can tell by the end. Let's I, I wanna tell the jumps because the main thing, uh oh yeah, he's playing it on either left or right. I can't tell. Um I think. But basically, uh, there's a bunch of up-down jumps and a bunch of left-right jumps in the normal chart. And so uh, if you turn them, if you put it on shuffle, that's those are guaranteed to turn into corner jumps mm. based on the way the shuffle algorithm Which you works. Could yeah, so um, like yeah, some some shuffles are easier than others. Basically, like my goal is any um, any jacks I want to be on the down arrow, because I can just do like jacks at 190 BPM 16 so like I can do them easier on the down arrow. But, um, yeah, it also avoids, like, having to do, like, in the normal chart, there's, like, down, down, jump, like, left, right, jump. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you can change that, because that's really, really hard. Mm -hmm. If you can do, if you change that to, like, left, left, and then, like, up, right, then you can bracket that. So Mm -hmm. it just makes a lot of those sections easier. And actually, what's really strange is that it guarantees the ending run which is normally a bunch of double steps to be a stream yeah that's really easy that's hmm. interesting and so it's like it's actually kind of crazy that like it makes me think that it was designed to be, to be played, played on shuffle, on shuffle. Mm-hmm. Hmm. which is kind of crazy when you think about it but i can't confirm that it just it's it's kind of eerie how well the chart well quote unquote <laughs> the chart works on shuffle how, it works better yeah <laughs> see this is a spooky song it's very creepy yeah it's just uh but yeah it's nuts but yeah just 
again, a ridiculous accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats, um, I mean, congrats to Chris. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for like the past, you know, six months, basically since Ace came out, people were like, oh, who's going to get it first? Yeah. So Hudson was really close. He um, he's played it probably more than anyone else. He has like over four or five hundred plays on it. Jesus. In Ace That's alone. That's probably more plays than I have on Ace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's played just playing Dead End and Tens. Oh, speaking of good accomplishments. Oh, yeah. That's another good yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, Hudson... Uh, MFC'd the entire tens folder. Uh, this is Kaze five seven three, by the way. Yeah, uh, he's, he's very dedicated to these, like kind of messed up songs on basic and stuff. Yeah, like playing, Pluto like, the First on basic is a ten. That's you have crazy. to MFC Pluto the First basic to have the ten folder MFC'd. Yeah, like I've I've MFC'd all the expert and challenge tens, but I don't know if you could pay me enough money to go. And try to MFC the whole folder, I'd probably rip my hair out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's like over 200, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's like 203 songs or something. Yeah. Which, and, yeah, that's... I mean, like, it's... Clearly, it's doable. It shows, I think, like, the dedication that, that Kaze has. Yeah. Um, Because so many, like, I think it's, it's easy to, especially, like, if you just look at the expert and challenge charts, then, like, okay, doing the 10s is, like, not actually incredibly hard like yeah obviously mfc'ing songs is hard but like when you look at it in the context of good players and like what's doable the really really hard ones wild rush uh that's a pretty hard msc about on on par as some of the 15s i have (laughs) msc'd but um to go and do all the like those are like the eat like an expert 10 is like a fairly easy song typically but like a basic 10 is probably a boss song a boss song yeah so it really puts it into perspective to think like, oh, like you only have to go back and do the basic and difficult. Like, no, that's actually the harder part of it, yeah. not the easier part, as you might think. Because you get all the BPM changes and yeah. stops and everything. And yeah. a lot of times the stops and things like on songs, they're almost like made with the harder charts in mind. Exactly. So they yeah. make less sense yeah. on and, and like... And if you've played the harder charts a bunch, you essentially have to relearn it. You yeah. Think you think you know where it is. It's I'm, like, I'm terrible at monkey business expert me because too. I'm so yeah, used same. to the challenge. Yeah. yeah. The big one for me is Pluto. Pluto challenge makes so much sense because the stops are like, there's like the, like the piano, like the really deep piano going in the back. And it is uh, like every note of that piano is a step. And then when it stops, it's a stop. And then you go to the expert and it goes to something, it goes to like the violins instead. And those are just, like, really erratic. And then you still have, like, stop... Like, you have, like, two stops in between two sets of arrows with nothing, like, no arrows in the middle of those stops. <laughs> so you just kind of see, like, the arrows, like, jerking up forward. Like, and you're like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, you almost have to go step it. Just You do. I have I have a whole thing. When I had to PFC Pluto Expert, I had to come up with this whole go-stepping, like, craziness to mm-hmm. get it my first time. And it's still hard. Like... I have to relearn that every before every tournament that I enter because in case Pluto Expert comes up, I can't just rely on like, oh, this is how the song goes and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I just think like like Max Three Hundred Super Max Memex. I wonder what that sounds like. Oh God! I think he got. I think Fax was one of the <laughs> was one of like Ugh. the basic tens. Yeah, God. I almost. I remember I was going through the thirteens folder and just trying to clear every like just get the thirteens folder line because it's only a few boss songs like on difficult and. I uh, almost failed Felm on difficult on life four because I just missed a bunch in the stop. Like the, I, the, yeah, like like the, those stops are drilled into my head of like making sense in the context of the expert or challenge charts because it's just a steady stream with stops. And it's just like, just take out a few arrows and it becomes a thousand times harder. (laughs) And so this is all to say that Hudson did a very cool thing. Yes. Um, like, I was thinking about, like, okay, let's say that I go from, like, the one folder, I go up. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. what would be the first folder that I couldn't do? And my answer was the four folder. <laughs> because, like, cytokinesis is a four on beginner. And I was like, oh, there's no way in hell I'm ever seeing that. To do the tens folder entirely is just, like, yeah. mind-blowing. So, uh, lots of crazy scores this week, actually. Uh, there's also a new world record on nine. Yep. Uh, IX. 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 Nine. Set yeah. by uh, Paul. On uh, the same night Chunka. that, that uh, Chris Chike got uh, daggers. Yeah. Um, I don't know how close Hudson... When did Hudson do, same, do the tents? It was a, it, week, I think. Yeah, it was a couple days ago. I think a couple days ago. I, I, day I, I don't think it was all on the same day. But yeah, it was a very impressive week. So, I mean, that like that's like the hardest 18 probably, right? Yeah. yeah. You guys should watch the video of Paul playing that song because uh, it's just it, really impressive. Yeah. Um, he really mastered the uh, using Sun Plus... 
to, oh, oh uh, yeah that's a fun one for sudden plus yeah to kind yeah. of to kind of uh, so like if you've never played nine before it has a uh, it's like slow i think it's like half bpm for yeah. half the song about yep and then it speeds up and then it speeds up and slows down and then it slows down, down. And it slows yeah. down again. so yeah. yeah i don't you can't do sudden plus for the second slowdown uh no it's a, I too don't, fast to change yeah no i don't think so yeah um, but Jeff, you, you were the first to PFC it, mm-hmm. um, and you got like what, 48? 48, yeah. yeah. So, which was my first full combo of the song. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to write that off as being like, I was happy to get it. So yeah. are you, you going to try to go for Paul's score? No, I do actually really love that chart. It's, um, it's a, kind of a shame that I don't play it as much. This might give me a little bit more reason to play it and try. I really like just, there's a, a drill at the end that's 24ths at 198 mm-hmm. and I'm, extremely bad at it so the fact that i got it ever let alone in my pfc run is like i just know that i can like without a lot of practice i won't be able to come anywhere close to pfcing it again i kind of got lucky and so i remember watching chris try to pfc it around it was around the same time because it nobody had done it yet and he got a miss so it's like a left right drill and then it ends on an up arrow and he got a miss on the last up arrow and he was quite sad um but yeah so lots of great accomplishments this week um i think everybody's kind of got the juices flowing. people are turning up yeah no, for, people for are turning K- up for kc yeah. yeah see this is why i said uh kc was not going to be a disappointment because i knew that you know just everybody was gonna be really motivated to just be competitive it's it's crazy how hype it already is and i feel like it, within the first few days of the qualifying period it, people were just posting some some really good stuff yeah yeah so like uh I don't know. I saw uh, Sappy's set was was really good. Uh, we got Fafems and Jeff. Yeah, Fafems and Jeff at the top. Tied. Yeah, tied. Yeah, I think t- being tied is that really was crazy. Yes. Although I would like to see you at number one. I I think I can get my score a little bit lower. So let's let's give a. Br- I'm I'm gonna go a little chronologically here. So well, t- do we want to take a quick detour and do some news and then come back to KC? We can do that. Oh sure. Yeah, so yes. We have we have uh, two new songs that came out last week. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't. It seems like don't. No, no. no I to break that news. I, I just think everybody got so excited about KC that we forgot about the new eleven. I, I didn't forget. Yeah. And I'm the just, new thirteen. Uh, go, go, where the, go where the conversation led me. Yeah. yeah so uh, yeah. So these are more songs from uh, Konami's new rhythm game that's coming out, or is already is it, out. Is it, is it not a rhythm game? Is it? I think it is. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's going to be a competitor to. Um, uh, the Love Live. Hansen Miku game. No, not Love Live. Project Eva? Project Eva. I thought it was just an idol game. Uh, uh, what is an idol game? You play, a, like, you try to, like, make idols love you or something? Oh, no, you know what it's going to be is like? Is that, the, like, a dating um, sim? I don't know. What's that game in Japan? Maybe you remember, Roger, uh, where you get, you it actually prints out... Prepara? Little, Prepara, yeah. I think or we, Aikatsu? Yeah, I, I don't know what Aikatsu is. But... Yeah, Aikatsu is basically the same as Prepara. So Prepara is kind of like a, it's like a really kind of... Uh, pink and flowery game where it prints out like a QR code and uh, like a dancer onto a card and it's definitely a rhythm game sort of it's like not a very competitive rhythm game but uh it involves like you know trading up your dancer or something yeah and I, I have a feeling that this game's gonna be like that anyway this is a big detour um but this is a new game that Konami's working on we don't know if it's gonna be a rhythm game and uh there's two new songs that came out of that the first one is called um Koi no uh, Puzzle Magic which is like love puzzle magic in uh, Japanese. And it's an 11. And uh, Dalton, you have something to say? It's by so- Soda, right? I think it's a Soda song. Oh, I mean, yeah. It sounds like a, a Soda Fujimori song. I'm, I'm pretty sure one of them is Soda and one of them was Tomosuke. And uh, I'm going to double check that, that that's right. But keep talking and I'll, I'll come yeah, back. Yeah, so I love the song. My personal criticism. Uh, the chart is uh, standard 11. I don't think there's that much to say about it. Uh, you guys have anything to say about the... It it could be a pretty pop, like, 14 or 15. Yeah, maybe this is a challenge chart, if there was. Yeah, I don't know. They seem to be reluctant about, like, putting challenge charts with, like, cutesy songs. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Or, like, especially... Or, they... or at least these the, these kinds of songs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Well, there's the other Koi song. Um, it's one that, I forgot what the name is. Oh, the Love is a Space War? Cool. No. Well, no. there's Koi Sudu. Koi Sudu, the one that's, that's, the, the, that's like a 16. The Prim song? The Prim song. That, yeah, that's that's Love is a Space War. That's oh, okay. a 17. And it's a 17. A 17, yes. yeah. So yeah. there you go. There's one. Yeah. 
Um, so the other song is uh, Strawberry Choo Choo, and it is a banger. Well, I don't know. That's, <laughs> the that's... chart is definitely pretty good. Yeah, the, the chart's the... great. Yeah, they, they were having fun with the chart. Yes, the, the chart looks very, very fun. Personally, I'm not a fan of the, um, you know, the anime girl kind of screamy songs. Um, yeah, they're both kind of like that. Yeah. The, the Koi no Positive Magic Koo is, like, better. It's it's more, like, softer, like, no, how you would expect normal people to, to sing. And then, like, Strawberry Choo Choo just kind of goes, like, full anime. Like, yeah. full, full like, 16-year-olds, like, kind of whiny <laughs> girl. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm so not into that. Yeah. The, so chart, the chart has some very interesting rhythm, like, 16th rhythms, so. though. Yeah. And. There's even 12th notes in there. There's one little set, one little, yeah. one yeah. little, little yeah. sprinkle. It's a pretty solid, <laughs> it's a solid 13, I'd say. Um, but yeah, yeah the, fun. the chart looks fun. fun. Right, the twelfth notes were in the soda one. Oh really? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is surprising for an eleven. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in Strawberry Choo Choo, there's some like, I mean, if you bother to do them, there's some like crossovers kind of into like sixteenth things. Yeah, that, that like some interesting patterns and interesting rhythms. Yeah, yeah, I dig it. I'll play it because it seems like the chart is redeeming, but probably yeah. won't go back to it very often. Um, but yeah, hey, let us let us know if you guys have played these charts. You should let us know. They are available in the U.S. They are available in the U.S. this time. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. let let us know on Twitter or in, in the uh, Discord chat what you think of them. Um, yeah. Remember to go join our Discord. Oh yeah, join our Discord. It's the link is like. It's, at, on it's our Twitter. pinned on our Twitter account. It, yeah. yeah, it's pinned. On, it's it's hopping. We're all in there. So Chris Jikes in there too. Come hang out with post. us. <laughs> That was a that was like a bait and switch right there. <laughs> I mean, he really is in there. But yeah. Anyway, um, what else did we want to talk about? Or do you want to go to questions now? No, we can go to KC. We gotta talk about. Oh KC. yeah, yeah we should KC. talk about KC. We're well, a lot of stuff to talk about there. Yeah. Okay. So Jeff, you want to give a timeline, sort of? I did. Yeah. So, that's... well, I think the first, like, if we're looking at, um, like, I think the the regions to look out for are definitely the U. Like, obviously, we care about the U.S. a lot, like, because a lot of us have a, you know, a either a personal or semi-personal stake in this, uh, in, like, who moves on, right? Um, the other one, like, I was just kind of curious to see, um, like, what Fafems would put out. Um, so Fafems got, uh, minus 28 on, like, the first or the second day, which is really, really insane. Um, he got, what was it, 10 on possession, which was a new world record. Ooh. Uh, then, uh, seven on Be a Hero, which at the time was world record, taken from, uh, from Chris, who had eight. And then 11 on Rising Firehawk, which, uh, definitely could have been improved. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously, like, goodness. It's ten on possession. really crazy. Yeah. yeah, ten on possession. Um, I, I had a minus 44, uh, run, where I got, like, an insane, I, I thought, like, to me it was, it blew my mind. Like, 14 and a miss on possession, which was the best I'd ever done on possession. It was my highest, like, EX score and also money score. Like, I had, like, it was like a 998, which was my best, which was kind of silly. And th but then I got, like, 17 on Rising Firehawk and, like, 10 on Be a Hero. So, um, I was hoping to improve that, and then I did. Uh, what was it, two nights ago? Dalton convinced me to... Yeah, I come out to the arcade. Yeah, I was over at the arcade. I, I finally East Ridge Mall. No, I we're at da uh, Daily City. Oh, Daily City. Yeah, it's five minutes from here. Yeah, why would I go to ERM? I thought you said you brought him to ERM. No, oh, never mind. Um, I I haven't been able to play for like the past two months as I've, as I've talked about. So I was very excited. So I went to go play with Roger actually on Saturday morning. Yeah, and I played like three sets and I died. Like. Because I pretty much just went straight to play in the case. He said I played it, like, second set. And I was, like, wheezing and, like... like It's rough. Like, literally almost, like, throwing up. The, like, it, the playing stamina cause I, requirement. Because I, I was so tired. Like, and I my stamina was just, like, not there. Um, so I was like, I have some work to do. So what order did you do the songs in? Um, well, have... that day, I, I was like, I cannot play Possession Challenge. <laughs> yeah. Um there's there's some strategy that I kind of want to talk about with possession yeah, because sure. it really depends on what your skill level is. Uh, like last week, we're like, yeah, just play the challenge. But like after like playing it myself, I kind of realized like for some people, it's going to be smarter to play the expert um, because the challenge you're bound to get a bunch of misses and it's a lot more tiring. So yeah, it's going to kill you. So that could potentially affect your other ones. So that first day, oh, last uh, Saturday. I just played Possession Expert, um, I think, first. And 
I, yeah, because I was like, I can't do possession like in the set. Like I will die. Um, but I, I learned the chart a bit more and I practiced it. So when I came back on uh, Tuesday to go play, uh, I started my set with possession challenge. Because um, I think trying to do it after already being tired out by Rising Firehawk and Be a Hero, which for me are like... Yeah, they're still very draining. They're, well, they're, they're, they're quite tiring. So they're all going to tire you out. So that's why I was curious about... Oil. Yeah. I, 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 I'm on Dalton's, like... About doing the hardest one first? Yeah, you, Possession you, Challenge first, because that's the one I'm, like, most likely to totally screw up. Yeah, so that's another thing. is like, if you screw up... If you play Possession first on Challenge or whatever, and you screw it up, then, like, you can be like, okay, the set's a wash. I can go... I could play other stuff. Yeah. Mm, like, that's, that's the strategy. The yeah. boost of confidence that you get from... It's not even the well, confidence. It's, it's just... It's a percentages game. It's like, if you have a... If you have a 90% chance to screw up Possession, then... And, like, a 50% chance to screw up the other two, you mu- you would much rather, like, find that... The 10% that you get it, the like, right. You want to get that right. And then... The other ones come naturally after it. You don't want to yeah. leave the riskiest thing for last. Yeah, I'm a lot more consistent on the other two. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, interesting. Whereas not on possession. Um, I, but every time I played possession since then, uh, I've gotten a little bit better and better um, at it. So yeah, I was impressed by your progression that day. You, you played it once and then did okay, and you played it again. And then yeah, and got then like I twenty twenty k. Yeah, more. I think I played it like two or three more times on Tuesday too. Um, so yeah. You just, I, I think it really helps to learn the chart um, or any of the charts. Like you use a lot less energy when you're not like trying to react. Mm-hmm. Like if you're basically sight reading, like when I played Be a Hero, uh, my first set, like I had watched the chart once on YouTube, like, and I played it on 3.25, which is like 617 God. BPM, I think, um, which is in my range, but for like basically sight reading something like it tired me out and like I could not MA because like my muscle memory is just like not there that I'm spending so much mental energy on like trying to read that it it just wrecked me. Hmm. Um it's not just the mental energy you spend, but it's also kind of like your emotions too. You're like you're more tense. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah, exactly. So I it. like chart familiarity like I think helps a lot. Um for for a lot more reasons than people think of just like, oh, I just know the chart better. But like you know how to like pace yourself. I mean, it's like running a race. And like, you can relax. Yeah, like, but e- sort of. But yeah, even pacing yourself. Like, <laughs> you, you, like if you play possession and you go like all out for the first half, like you're gonna be dead. Like, yeah. I try and conserve as much energy as I can, like for the first half of that song, basically, mm-hmm. because you just know that the last half of it's gonna kill you. Yeah, and the the, the jumps are really tiring, and you can just sit there and bracket them if you, if you really want to. <laughs> you, you can. Uh, so. Um, but yeah, as I was saying with possession, there's, there's some strategy to it that, um, like I figured for me personally, like if I could break 1850 EX on the challenge, like that would make it worth it for me to play it over the expert because, uh, that like 25, 25 X, uh, perfect PFC on the expert is 1850. Um, I think, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's just the trade-off there. And so you kind of have to feel out what feels better for you um, mm-hmm. if you can do the challenge. But, like, if you're if you're kind of... There's a lot of people, I think, on the list there that, like, are in that range of, like, which should I play it on? But I think if you take the time to learn Possession Challenge, it's worth it to play. Yeah. Um, like, because it's it's 165 EX score difference, potential. Yeah. Um, so if you can, like, close that gap at least, it's yep. it's worth it to play it. Um, but it's good advice, but, yeah. it, but if not, don't feel bad. Yeah. You know, try it on expert first and then if you feel like you can like, and then also play it on step mania a ton too. That, that really, helps. yeah. Roger, you said you played, you played it like a hundred times in step mania. Yeah. I, I didn't really know possession challenge before the set came out and I, I, I had to look at it on step mania a zillion times in order to even digest what was going on at the end. And for me, it's, it's. It's rough for me because I, I'm not really that great at hard songs, and just having an 18 and two 17s in a row to play, like, definitely not used to that. When I when I did it the first time, I was, like, feeling it really hard. I basically couldn't do anything for the rest of the night, and the next day I was tired. And I was like, <laughs> it's just, like, three DDR songs, you know? <laughs> yeah. Why am I feeling like this? It's just because I, yeah, I don't, I don't play stuff like that. Yeah. 
I like I was surprised that I like my my stamina came back so fast that like when I went on Tuesday, like after I played my KAC set, I was like, oh, I want to play 18s. So I played a set of three like 18s I hadn't played before. And like I wasn't that dead, and then I played a set of all seventeens I hadn't played before. See, or four, I played four seventeens actually. So, so KC is going to get people to start playing harder songs. Yeah, and like good, and it's, until it's it already ends. happening. And like my until it ends. my uh. stamina seemed to be a lot better. And I think part of it is that like I've lost like twenty five pounds in the past like three months or so. Nice. And so like I I think that actually really helped. Um, nice. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. Yeah. Less weight to carry around. Yeah, and, and to move around. Yeah, uh, on the pads. So I think right now I'm sitting at about thirty fourth on the KC standing. So speaking of which, Roger, uh, you're actually forty first now. Wow, Ooh. damn! It, people, um, it's it's changing really fast. Changing yeah, fast. I was at thirtieth yeah. last night. Wow. Yeah, I've been, I've been checking it pretty much constantly since it went up, and it's you just see names just like shifting. Yeah. pretty quickly. So where are you seeing this uh, cool information? Oh yes, so. so uh, uh, you uh, go, I think uh, Roger yeah, Roger. Gets to... yeah we, we have a new site uh, called kac.sfevolve.com, which shows a though it, KAC World 100 is what I what I've called it, and it just automatically updates the the latest scores from Konami's website and puts everyone into one big list. So, yeah, because Konami's website uh, it's only broken out by region. Right. Yeah, there's not a list of everybody. Um, that's easily a bit, like, you can see at once. So. Yeah, so this really good DDR player and uh, prolific Twitter user, Echo Spherix, he, also known as Retore on uh, EMUs, had a spreadsheet last year and this year that basically is like this, but it wasn't automated. So I, I, I just kind of put together a web app that scrapes Konami's site and, and puts it in a list. And it's really convenient just to show where everyone is and kind of keep tabs on the, on the situation. Yeah, I kind of check it constantly just because it's very interesting. I have it bookmarked. It's always <laughs> nice to, to get a little bored at work and just click on that button and see what the uh, see if anyone's changed. Yeah, it's, it's a new site to check. Yes. So if, you, <laughs> if you're checking love. Facebook and Twitter, you can now check kac.sfevolve.com. Make it your homepage. <laughs> <laughs> Sign our guest. AOL page. keyword, KAC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other KC stuff that you want to talk about? Well, I got to. I wanted to talk about how I improved my score a little bit. Please do. Yeah. Um, on Tuesday when I went. Um, so I now I'm now minus twenty eight, uh, right up there with Fems. Um, but what really surprised? So it was a really crazy set for me because I got twenty two on possession PFC, um, which was my first PFC of the song. So I kind of let my MA slip a little bit, like in the runs, because I was like, well, I only like now I just want to PFC it. Like yeah. I don't care what I if I get a million perfects. Mm -hmm. I just want to have that gold lamp. A know? million. The, a million perfects. There's that perfect. there's that asshole that was playing with you though that was probably throwing you off. Oh yeah, Talton. <laughs> um and then uh what was really crazy I was like, oh it's minus twenty two, that's pretty good. I had minus seventeen on my on my best when I had minus forty four. So I was like, okay, I'm like still on plus five, which isn't great, but maybe I'll, you know, kick it on the next two songs. And kick it I did. Because I got a uh, world record on Rising Firehawk with two perfects. That's really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Be a Hero with four perfects. I yeah. think Fafems or Chris took it... I think Chris took it back with six. Yeah. From Fafems, who had seven. And then I got it with four. Um, and then Rising Firehawk, Chris had three previously. Yeah, and I got two, yeah. But so yeah. within, like, four steps of each other. The, yeah, they were... It was like... There's, like, a part that goes, like, up, down, jump, up, down, up, down, jump. And right... Like, a hundred combo. And I'm just bad at that, so I got two perfects there, yeah. but then destroyed the rest of the song, I don't know how. But you said, what were you saying? I said, but Jeff, we need to talk about your possession score. Why? It's, 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 not, it's weak. It's, it's weak. still very, very incredible. <laughs> it's incredible, but it's weak. Wow. <laughs> I think I could do better. I think, uh... Yeah, like, so you want to talk about, like, what, what do you think went wrong? Uh, that's what I was, like, basically what I was saying was I, uh... I focused more on getting all perfects mm -hmm. and less on getting, like, Marvelouses and something else. So I really, like, because I think there's something about, like, playing a song, especially an 18 for me, that I have a good run on, where at a certain point it's just like, just don't get greats. Like, I need to switch off, like, MA mode a little bit and just don't get greats. Because I can always improve a PFC later, but actually getting the PFC mm -hmm. is really important to me. So, like, even though KAC matters, like, possession, like, a PFC on possession will stay 
after KAC ends, mm-hmm. and that's important to me. I want to, like, eventually it'd be nice to have the whole 18-folder PFC or something. Yeah. So I was just like, let me get that out of the way, then it's actually a lot of, like, a lot of pressure taken off for future plays of it, because now it's like, if I have, like, five perfects on it, I'm not going to be freaking out and thinking, like, oh my god, like, my first PFC is going to be, like, an SDP. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like, okay, I've already PFC'd it, so if I get five and a miss, like whatever mm-hmm. like I, I that's a good ex score that's good for kac i'll just like be happy with that yeah less pressure for getting a non-combo yeah so i was like it, it just so happened that i had an insane next two songs that put me uh right up there with fafems which is great not that we're in the same region a lot of people are like whoa tied with fafems like yes but we're not even in the same region so it doesn't matter but, but people care about that anyway. Yeah, they do. The sync on Be a Hero is, is a little harder than I expected. Because, yeah. you, you know, you see 190, you're like, oh, you know, it's going to be easy to MA. But you play it, and it seems like it's changing a few times. Uh, yeah. I, I got or like, something. I got, like, 65 on it, or 68. or so. It's it's hard to time. Yeah. And I think there's just a lot of steps. So that, like, excellent. Uh, yeah, maybe per, that's per, what it is. Per, I'm just getting tired. And yeah. That's why it seems like it's changing. Because I'm changing. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and more steps means, be like, relatively more perfects, generally. Yeah. So. Yeah, the other interesting thing, um, which is, you know, we were talking about criticisms of the KAC rule set. So to give perspective right now, the uh, current second... I'm going to ignore Chris, because Chris decided to play the qualifier. And he's number one right now, but he's already there. So ignore Chris. But the second U.S. player, who's Paul Chunka right now, uh, who's also third overall, is not going to get an invite. And if like if this was the KAC standings, like the day of the qualifiers ending, right? The th- third place overall in the world score would not get to go to Japan. <laughs> but right now, what is it? The seventy uh, eighth Asia is like seventy yeah. eighth. The seventy yeah. eighth player <laughs> in. Uh, from because they're taking one from Asia, mm-hmm. and Asia is like a very weak region. So it, it's it's Asia outside of Korea and Japan. So exactly, it's basically. Right. Like so, like Taiwan and Singapore so. and the Philippines and places like that. Um, do Do you guys know where Renon is from? I think Taiwan. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. So we'll be looking. Doctor D needs to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is he I don't even... know if Doctor D can can he you know really kick it on. Something like possession. Well, I guess even if he doesn't, he, he was, can do he, he can do better Renan, than that. Probably, and, yeah. And then Carlos, uh, maniac stepper, yeah, uh, who's from Puerto Rico but has been living in uh, Taiwan yeah. for a couple months now. Um, I don't know if that technically qualifies. Like, I don't know if he's technically allowed. There was like weird English on the website of like, you need living in place like, origin country. origin yes. Yeah. Uh, otherwise disqualified, whatever. Like, there was some weird English about, like, you actually need to be living in that place. You can't just, like... Especially because they have an East and West Japan divide right now for those, like, seven players. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, they're, like... I think they're they're just kind of keeping an eye out for people who live in one area and just travel to the easier region. And Let's actually... Take the train over the arcade. Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what... That actually happened for uh, some KACs in the past. Oh, Or, like, uh, actually, Blue and Fee, uh, Eric... Who was like sitting in on the last case or the last uh, tap episode, but didn't say anything. Um, he was telling me a couple months ago about like I think there was a drum mania. Like Hokkaido is like really not a good uh, drum mania region, so <laughs> players in Tokyo would take the train up to Hokkaido. Damn, that's to, like was that eight hours? It's uh, four, like yeah, twelve hours, something yeah, something, like ten that. or something. Well, probably. So, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. So why why do you think it's divided east and west? Especially because Japan is a long country, isn't that kind of weird to divide it like that? Or no, is, not, is no that I mean how... like that's they they like Kansai and Kanto are. East and West Japan, like those are West and East Japan. Okay, so it's not like it's not like California where it's like North California and South California. Right. Yeah. Like, like no, nobody calls California like East California and West California. Right. Yeah. No, but uh, like Japan looks kind of long, but it actually is like more of a horizontal thing than it is a vertical. Thing. Okay. Gotcha. So Just like, because most of the cities are on the coast, I guess. It's right. Yeah. Well, well I mean, and it, and it, it, it's like really. it's like tilted. Yeah, it's a little tilted. That's it's, I don't know. it's Glo- interesting. Globes, globes are arbitrary anyway. <laughs> so. Japan is an island by the sea. Yes. Uh, so it's like like stuff like Kyoto and Osaka are in uh, Kansai, but Tokyo and like I don't know something else. Yokohama. Yeah, and the <laughs> other places are in Kanto. So it's an interesting. Uh, like right now, like you see, like a lot of the actually Japan's kind of turning up. You know, there's a lot of. Um, 
of the top 12 right now, five of them are Japanese, which is a good um, a good split. It's just not great that, uh, you know, there are actually, in the top 16, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten U.S. players. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nine of them, or, well, I guess I was counting Chris there, but eight of them don't get to go. <laughs> you know, like... What's what's up with that? Like I'm I'm proud to see a bunch of blue at the top though. Yeah. Yeah. So American players. Yeah, though. American players got to turn up. We got to we yeah. got to turn the the scoreboard blue. Yeah. It's the good. colors are arbitrary by the way. <laughs> so, I just thought that they looked nice, especially the green. If you go down and look at Reno. <laughs> About an Asia. You just scroll all the way to the bottom. Yeah, oh, it's nice, Roger picked a nice palette, I think for the yeah. site. Uh, I like the purple. Yeah, the so go check it out. It's kac.sfevolve.com. I think it's kind of funny that, like, what is... Is there two purple? Two from Korea? Uh, right for Femmes and Retori, which is yes. Echo Spirits. Hold on, keep scrolling. Is there anyone else? And, uh, There's Rice Bob, I think. Yeah, it's way ah, at the Rice Bob got, got, got pushed got, off. Got pushed off. off. Yeah. I just think it's crazy, like, do people in Korea just not care? Because, like... <laughs> They're like, eh, it's You Fafems. can't beat for Femmes. Like, at no, least... No, it's, it's a pump nation. At least... Well, that too. I mean, I... Look, one of my rivals is a Korean guy, and he's, like, basically just as good as me, and he could easily be on there, like, at the same place as me. Right, and that's what I'm saying is, like, I I guess, like, you're on the leaderboard even though, like, you maybe not, you don't expect to make it to, yeah. like, as a qualifier. No, so maybe other people just, like... They're like, eh, I don't even want to bother trying. Yeah, maybe. That's like, possible. Like, they, they've, they're like, if I'm not qualifying, then, like, th- that's what I was trying to say last week is, like... Even if you're not gonna win, like just play it anyway. It's fun. There's a leaderboard. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's dope to see where you you stack up against everybody else. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I think so. But they don't they don't have a Korean tap that tells them to do <laughs> fun stuff. Apparently so. not. Yeah, it could be a cultural difference. Does anybody speak Korean? <laughs> nope, not me. Sumit does. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's get Sumit. Yeah, let, uh, any Korean, everybody who speaks Korean, like post on the World Wide Web and tell <laughs> tell your fellow Koreans to turn up. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 really impressed with Japan because it seemed like last year, like at, there were a lot of people on the list who were, you know, on the leaderboards, but I don't think the scores were quite as as good as they are this I, year. For sure not. Yeah, it seems like people are are really trying, and and it's probably a direct result of the fact that they have seven entrants. Yeah, for East and West. Japan. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we basically talked about it last week, and. I was pretty, maybe yeah. Maybe I, it's just working exactly like they wanted it to work. Yeah, it's like it's getting people encouraged to play yeah, more. It's true. So perhaps but, I was wrong. I feel really bad about Paul because like he's uh, he's very motivated. He's yeah, like, he's crazy he's good. So high up there too. Uh, I would love to see more U.S. entrants, but it's just not in Konami's. Kind yeah, of, maybe next year. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, not to mention that Paul also went to KC last year too. Yeah, he's going stuff. anyway. All of us are are going anyway. Yeah. Like regardless of what happens. I don't care if I get bumped out. Like we're just gonna show up and bully Konami into doing what we want. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Alright, so we have a lot of questions. Should we move on to questions? Yeah, let's go for it. Alright. Um so I'll start off with a, a question from DDR Croissant, uh, Jess. Uh, she asks, if you could sing along to any song while you play DDR, which song would it be? Uh, to which Chris Chyk immediate re- immediately replied, "Cartoon Heroes." Yeah, I've also seen Chris singing "Remember You." <laughs> remember Dude, you is a really good you, one. Remember you is a banger. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a lot of great stuff. I was playing Random Caprice the other day, and Jeff was singing a song, and it was throwing me off, and I yelled at oh. him to stop. What, what, what song was it? it? Was, hold on, no, it was a feeling of love. Feeling of love, yes. Which is a great song, and I was very upset that he yelled at me because <laughs> it's my machine. I'll sing if I want to. <laughs> I was just trying to. Get some MA going. He was, trying, he was trying to pop off on random caprice. <laughs> Before we go to, to questions, uh, oh. there's actually some news on January 20th. There's a DDR Extreme oh, random right, yeah. caprice yeah. tournament at uh, in Oakland at the Genesis Fighting Game Tournament. And if you're in the Bay Area or if you're anywhere near the Bay Area or if you're coming to Genesis to play fighting games, come play DDR Extreme at that tournament and it's gonna be it's going to be awesome. Uh, yes, so uh, the DDR Freestyle Tournament is the weekend after Genesis uh, on January 27th. At Round 1 San Jose, Eastridge Mall. Yep. So that's going to be fun, too. Uh, it, I haven't seen a freestyle tournament in years, so... Yeah, that was. I think it was organized, in at least in part, by Chaos. Yeah. Who, who's John. extremely good DDR yeah, player. He's a good player, but he's been a uh, freestyle player for... Oh, 15 years or something also like Which i didn't even know that yeah he well and he teaches actual like dancing oh no like, way yeah he's yeah. he's like a dance instructor for like 
hip hop dancing. That's pretty and stuff. sweet. So it the, there should be some good routines to come out of that. Um, and we got a lot of pop, uh, pop uh, pump players at that location too. So maybe they'll try and get in on some DDR freestyles. Yeah. Which by the way, actually, I should mention. Um... DDRcommunity.com is a great site for uh, tournament stuff. If you go there and you, you go to, uh, you click on the DDR, or you can click on the tournament tag, uh, it'll tell you about all the upcoming tournaments. Uh, and then you can find more information about the DDR Freestyle and the Genesis uh, Random Caprice Tournament. Um, and maybe we'll tweet about it too. Uh, so let's see, uh, what's next? We got some questions? Yeah, we got more questions. Um, so, uh, Des Pispenser on Twitter asks, uh, most efficient way to learn a song with many stops, like Chaos or Pluto, practice a lot on CMOD, or just keep watching a video of the chart? I think, think? At, like, actually playing it on Step Mania, like, if yeah. you, if you have a In the Groove machine, or Step Mania machine, whatever you want to call it, available, like, that's probably the best way to learn it, so you're not dumping a bunch of credits into a machine, um... But yeah, I think actually playing a song on Step Mania helps a lot more than just watching a video. Like even if you're just tapping along like on your desk or whatever to Step Mania or to a video, like actually playing it helps you learn a lot more. Um, Jeff, do you have any advice on like sort of deliberate practice? Or I know Roger, you, you kind of do this stuff too about like rather than just like, oh, I'm just going to play this a bunch of times and hope to memorize it. Like do, is there... A way to go about doing that better i mean i i start if i have to learn something i feel like i haven't learned like a really gimmicky song in a long time but i start with like c mod and assist tick and just get a feel for what it sounds like what, what the game wants me to do i think like pluto the first is one something that sticks out to me of like i really had to like look at the step like i had to play it on a c mod a bunch and then i had to figure out like there were a few sections that start basically like basically start on like a 16th note like the stops come out and it's like a six the 16th note is the first note that you hit and it's weird because it's like on like a blue note or a red note instead and uh it really freaked me out so i like tried to place other notes sometimes to try to like complete the rhythm and then that would sometimes like translate into a ghost step when i was actually playing it um so if I try to, like, sometimes I modify the chart a little bit to make sense for me and then, like, figure out what I have to, like, okay, like, every, basically every note that I add as a ghost step, how can I add the ghost steps in, like, a meaningful way and then eventually I have the chart memorized or something. Mm-hmm. Or, like, the gimmicks memorized. It's it's hard. I mean, C-Mod and, and Assistic is good for almost any song. Uh, Chaos and, and Film included, like, whatever else here. Or Pluto, whatever else. Hmm. Um, let's see, uh... Blazon Calf on uh, the Discord channel asks uh, if there's any difference in form between going for MFCs on easy stuff like 11s and under versus going for PFCs on higher level stuff, 15s and up. Any that, difference in form? I'm yeah. not sure about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think so. You're you're stepping a lot harder, I think, for one thing. Yeah, a um, lot more. You can exert a lot more energy yeah. um, on on trying to MA easier stuff, whereas. Even on like fifteenth and stuff, you might have a more conservative play style while still trying to just get perfects. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of people who are around my level or just do kind of like the easy MA stuff and kind of suck at the hard stuff. And I think it's a lot of times directly form related because whenever I'm playing, I'm usually stomping really hard and not thinking so much about like being conservative and stuff like that. So I think you kind of do have to shift your, just your your whole tendencies whenever you're playing stuff with lots of runs. Yeah, I think I have kind of the opposite problem is that I have a very conservative play style on uh, like relatively for DDR, I guess, for harder stuff, or I mean harder as in 15s and up, I guess, so that when I play easier stuff, like I have to force myself to play more deliberately and to like really try to MA um like it's something i have to con like always be conscious of that i mean i don't have any mfcs because i don't i mean I, I typically don't play things like easier than 13s uh very much but when i do like it i have to remember to step much more deliberately um because i otherwise i just don't yeah and if i had to guess blazing calf just judging from your scores and like the kind of stuff that you post 
you're you're probably in my boat where you you might need to learn to kind of just put your feet inside a little bit more and not step quite as hard yeah all right so next question um pez Dis- uh, des Piss spencer also wants to ask uh about if you have any tips on quitting monster zero ultra because it's ruining its life with the high energy and crisp flavor <laughs> it's 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 got a nice citrus and pineapple infusion is that what it is it it tastes there's like a tropical yeah there's there's tropical, tropical notes vibe yeah yeah i uh it tastes, I, it tastes like white it does. It tastes like white. It tastes like electricity. <laughs> Tropical electricity. I, I apologize because I think uh, I think I got uh, Des Spencer uh, on the kick. <laughs> well, I, I mean, kept talking about it on stream, and he watches my stream a lot. Many people. And it's, it's the official drink of SF of Paul. It, it is. <laughs> Paul got me started on it. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, Paul was constantly looking in Japan for <laughs> Monster Zero Ultra. Dude, when he was visiting here a couple months ago... That's when I bought, like, that's when I got hooked. Yeah, no, I, I was driving him to the air, or we were, I was like driving. to brunch. Yeah, we were going to the, we, yeah, we were going to brunch, and Paul was like, oh, can you stop at this gas station? Like, I need to, and it's like San Francisco, so there's like no parking anywhere, so I was like, uh, I'll just like drop you off and do a lap around the block as he like runs in and tries to find Monster Ultra Zero. And then did he have a Monster like, Zero with At like brunch? 9 a.m.? Yeah, 9, it took like three like gas stations or liquor stores to eventually find it, but. But yeah. he found it? Yeah. And and he, bit, had, he had uh, it with brunch? I think it was after brunch. Oh. Like, we, we had to go <laughs> stop somewhere else, too. So, that, yeah. Sorry. Not sorry. So, another funny one is uh, uh, Jeff, a.k.a. Uh, Lao Lozer on Twitter, wants to know uh, why FFMs is playing this weird Candy Star edit. Uh, or time. wants to know, like, basically how he's doing it, probably. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, well, it is 2014, so that was back when... Uh, it's DDR 2014. That's back when they allowed um, edits. Oh, is it the one where it's just, like, 16th stream? Yeah, it's, much. A, it's just a crazy 16th yeah, stream. Yeah, I remember seeing a video of that a while ago. But that it, there was edit support. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what the question is. Like, explain this. Like, how is probably he... Probably how, how it's done. Yeah, like, what's, what's what, going the, on? You mean edits? How edits are done? Yes. Or? yes. Oh, okay. I mean, they're, you, no, they're not. Like, there's no edit support in Ace. So. Well, no, but, like, how was it done in 2014? 2014. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it was USBs. Like, you you had, you made edit data. This is, I mean, this is, hasn't changed for, for many years, except it went from uh, PlayStation 2 memory cards to USBs at some point. Mm-hmm. But basically, you had to have a Japanese home version, and then you had to, like, you made edit data, and then it, there was a way to export it onto whatever, either of those two mediums. Mm. And then... Uh, like, uh, it's unfortunate. It actually makes me think that we're not going to ever get, uh, edit support again. Oh, because Ace Machines don't because, have USB. Well, the US Ace Machines don't have, oh. uh, USB slots. Interesting. The old, like, 2013 and 2014 calves do. Mm-hmm. And, like, the X calves do and stuff like that, so... Probably not coming back, if I had to guess. Well, I can imagine that they do some sort of, like... It, it, can it, you it, imagine it, if it was an online... Yeah, sure. Yeah, you basically t- have, tie, tie it to your EME's you, profile. Yeah, you basically, like, upload charts somehow. You make charts somehow in some online editor. You attach them to your card, and you can share them with your friends. Yeah. That's the only way I can see it working. But considering, like, a little history, like, we, you know, typically, like, a new mix would come out. And for, like, three or four months, there would be, like, no rival support and, like, no edit support. And then those two things would, like, trickle in a little bit afterwards, like, after the new mix was new. So uh, the fact that we've gone almost two years with Ace and haven't... We got rivals, obviously, like, right away. But um, the fact that there's no edit support now makes me think that if they're going a whole mix without doing it, then it's probably over. So sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but that may be the case. (laughs) Yeah, we'll see, I guess. Uh, so actually, this is kind of a nice uh, transition to another question from Discord. Uh, Omni Anton asks, um, what are some new slash updated features you'd like to see in the next DDR version, uh, such as a rival system or a pacemaker, etc.? Uh, so yeah, I mean... Uh, edit support would be good. <laughs> edit support would be awesome, now that we think about it. I think, yeah. I, I think there's a, there's a lot of stuff. A global leaderboard would be great mm-hmm. that everyone could see without having to be logged in. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so we've talked about this uh, before, but also like a, a, a Dan ranking system. Oh, uh, yeah, like that's 2DX. Like my number one, I think. Yeah, so like being able to... So like 2DX has a, a ranking system where you can play a course of songs and then achieve like a ranking on your profile. Um, yeah, we, we were just cool. explaining this to 
Jeff's uh, roommate who does not play music games the other yeah. day with, with 2DX um, and basically just like explaining how the dance system works because we're like, oh yeah, Oliver is Kaiden on doubles. Mm-hmm. Like, they can and, even do something. He, he basically was just like, it's like the black belt system. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like a, it's like a Taekwondo thing. Yeah, yeah or it's like whatever. martial arts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they, I was going to say, they could even do something like they're doing now with KAC. Like, just they could reuse the same code, and just <laughs> do the same thing. It'd be yeah, cool that, much. like, I would love to have, like, weekly sets or something, just as a fun little way to get involved. And, like, I wouldn't it be cool if Tap Set of the Week actually had. A folder. You know, right? like, yeah, oh, yeah, that'd oh, be yeah. even better. Yeah. Event. Very, yeah. Hey, Kenobi. Cole, you're listening. Give us a call. Slide into We're our DMs. 573 Oh, uh, what is area code 573? That actually is a... It's Missouri. It's Missouri. I keep getting calls from Kaiser Permanente, which is a, a healthcare facility out here in California, and there it's like 1-800-573. And I, I look at my phone, I'm like, ah! Oh, it's, it's... It's Konami. It's Konami. Naoki Okada's calling me. Why is he calling me? No, he's, it's not. Uh, let's see... So Fraxel actually had a really oh, good yeah, question so that I wanted to talk about. I, I was going to mention that, but we we sort of covered it a little bit earlier. Um, but well, yeah, want, I think oh, this is ahead. I think it's a separate enough question that it's it's worth addressing. Kind of he uh, or they were asking how do I flip on the avoid perfect switch during hard stuff, uh, which is kind of like an interesting mentality that's kind of foreign to a lot of people because especially if you play uh, easier stuff a lot. And you kind of get into a mode where you're like more focusing on MA than anything else. It can be really discouraging. Or this is also if you've ever been really good at the game and then you stop playing for a while. Hmm. You go, you get like greats or misses and like there's a strong urge to just like quit. Because it's not perfection like you're used to either because you used to be able to do that and now you can't. Or the songs that you normally play are just geared towards like, oh, it's just like an auto PFC or something. Um... So I think it's an interesting question. Um, I think it is something you have to, like, consciously think about. Like, don't quit. Uh, like, in conserving energy a little bit more, like, you might find it easier to, uh, like, keep your brain in the right headspace. Um, but it's certainly not easy. And I think, like, for really, really... I still have it on really, really hard songs. Like, you know, it's almost like if I get a miss in the beginning of a song, like Egoism or something... Like, I'm actually happier because if I see that I have, a, like, a, you know, a, a gold combo going, like, through the first run in Egoism, and then I get a miss, it's, like, it might be the same as if I had gotten a miss way earlier on, but, like, be, I just used a ton of energy, and I was, like, feeling hyped that, like, oh, I'm not gonna, P- well, I'm like, I'm gonna PFC it, but, like, there's a certain, like, you exert more energy, you kind of get in your own head a little bit more, and then getting that miss, like, brings you all the way back down, and so it's, it's a, I think it's a really, like, a mental game. Um, more than anything else. So maybe just try and get a miss or a great really early on. I mean, so when I when I was playing my KAC set uh, on Rising Firehawk, I like on the like the fourth step, it basically starts on like it like a right was it right down right and then like down down right, foot switch right down right down down yes. yeah. So like on that foot switch, like my knee like locked up or like overextended backwards, and I got a good on, like, the fourth or fifth step of the song. And I was like, oh, well, shit, there goes my set. But I just kept playing. I was like, it's EX score, so whatever. Um, and I, like, PFC'd the rest of the song with, like, I got, like, 40-something perfect. Yeah, it helps and, a lot. And so I was like, I was like, damn, like, it kind of sucks that I missed the PFC, but, like, I think that not having it sort of, like, made me calm down a little yeah, bit more. Exactly. Like, I wasn't so, like, concerned about it. That's why, like, I, it's just kind of a weird, like, I, I don't think I'm actually advocating for anyone to uh, to get a grade on the first step just to, like, get your head in the right space. But <laughs> I think, like, try to... try get, to play, Get hyped with greats. Yeah. <laughs> try to play the song as if you, as if, like, nothing's on the line. You know, like, if you start thinking about, like, oh, this is the run, right? This is the time. Like, like you get in your own head a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, that's how mental blocks happen. Yeah. I think that... that it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy is that you get to like you rush a section because you're like oh i have to do this like really fast thing or you know like uh, any variety of of ways that mental blocks can affect you yeah i have this problem where basically this attitude has prevented me from playing songs that i know i'm going to get a bunch of misses and stuff on and that's also not good Mm -hmm. so 
I mean, that's what I, I, when I was playing with Jeff the other day, I was like, hey, just pick some 18s, pick some mm-hmm. 17s. Like, I was like, because otherwise I will avoid them. Yeah. So I think, I think Roger and I need to go. Because oh, yeah. we both want to fill out the 17 folder. Yeah, so do I. Uh, and Ooh. I also want to fill out the 18 folder, at least like clear everything. I'm starting but, to have more fun with 17s. So I'm, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it's good to work on, <laughs> on, uh, your stamina that way. So I think. Maybe next next trip to the arcade we can we can focus on that. Yeah. All right. So uh, one last one. It's uh, just a fun one for the last one. Uh, T error on Discord asks uh, to Roger, uh, knowing that you embrace the cyber aesthetic. I must ask, do you also play with the cyber note skin? And if not, why? The public deserves to know. Well, I mean, I got I got to say that James, I would say, is equally cyber, <laughs> um, oh. and if, if not more so. <laughs> I, th- I think, um, I haven't tried it yet, honestly, and I kind of want to, after talking about it. It's chunkier, yeah, so, so we, it's easier we did to talk, see. We talked about it before the show a little bit, and it is actually an interesting note skin. Um, yeah, so uh, there's one person in the Bay Area that plays it, Spencer, uh, and it's it's more opaque, it's not as uh, transparent, um, and it's just C- as vivid what, compared as Compared to Note, yeah. Yeah, so it's the same colors as Note. Uh, I think. Well, right? okay, so cyber is like the note skin itself, not the color. Yeah. The color can be whatever you want it to be, like rainbow or vivid. Oh, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the actual physical right. notes, how they look, it's like, yes, they are chunkier. Yeah, and then you said that you want to just be squares. <laughs> yeah, just give me, give me a big square. <laughs> I mean, they, they use a dot, right? Dot was kind of like a square. It was a diamond, it's a, which it's is a, a kind of square. It's a very, very small one, though. It's a butterfly one, too. I think. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Kevin Bodie plays on Cyber, so, and he's he's really good. I might I might actually try Cyber next time, because uh, I do think it looks... It's consistent with the, with the aesthetic of it. It is, yeah. yeah. And it looks Cyber, I agree. It's very angular. Um, yeah, it's a cool note skin, and it actually might be superior. We'll see. Um, all right, well, that's uh, that's gonna do it for tonight's. No, episode. we have we have taps. Oh, I forgot. Ah. <laughs> so yes, uh, before we leave you tonight, we have uh, the tap set of the week. So Dalton, you want to tell us about uh, everybody who submitted some scores? Oh yeah, we had a lot of scores, and a lot particularly of uh, like new people that I hadn't seen before. Um, so it's really cool to see just different people submitting it i like names i didn't recognize um so again thank you to everybody uh who submitted so what really quick what was the set last week it was the set last week last week was uh illegal function call was my pick um I tribe, think tribe was, was my pick and then edm jumpers uh yes yeah. um for anybody that missed it um so we had a uh, phenomenal t- these again all twitter names uh i think there might have been a couple people in discord too but um sorry if i missed you uh, we had Phenomenal Ta, uh, Zippo Third, Nolan Card, Big C927, Rinashta, uh, Toxic Jordan, Tung Janyantham, again, I, I gotta learn how to pronounce that because they keep playing, I'm sorry. Uh, third Irony, uh, Inun Ilayer, man, um, Ben Arndondo, it's a bunch of numbers, sorry Ben, uh, Fraxtol, Iffy Student, Jeffro Sledge, and Wicked Fedora. Yeah, nice job, everyone. Nice to. There's nice. always the thing of like pronouncing people's internet names in real <laughs> life because it happens on like Twitch or something. You're like, oh, welcome to the stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. I, I love your mom. Four twenty. I mean, Ben's a great guy, but mf three two eight nine two underscore Ben Twitter handle. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You get with well, all the good ones are taken. Uh, that's true. <laughs> I, I know. There's funga underscore. There's, there's, yeah. <laughs> apparently, there were 32,891 other MF underscore Bens. <laughs> yeah, so. apparently. It's a rough life. Uh, all right, so this week's uh, set of the week, um, I'll get us started. And uh, so I kind of alluded to this the previous week. So if you guessed what my pick was going to be, congratulations. But my pick this week is Cytokinesis. Mm. Which is, uh, if you've never played it before, it's a very... up garbage. It's a fucked up garbage <laughs> song. Yes, it's true. Um, actually, it's cool. I think it's kind of cool. It's a, it's a really cool speedcore song. Um, and it's uh, it's pretty tricky. It's got some... Gr- it's got a gradual speed up uh, in the middle. Which means impossible to MA. Yeah, very, very difficult to MA. And, um, like, it speeds up, and then, like, as you think it's, like, speeding up more, then all of a sudden it slows down again. Yeah. And you're like, Ugh. Yes, it's very difficult. So, yeah, that, that's why I picked it, because I feel like everybody avoids it, or uh, it's just not very popular. But it's, uh, it's pretty neat, and I think it'll sharpen some of your skills, uh, if anything. Yeah. 
How about you, Roger? What do you got? I'm going to pick Seduction Vocal Mix. Oh, oh what a good It's one. a really good song kind of from DDR Supernova. Yeah, it's good. And nice and streamy, so check it out. A little late, though. Yeah. <laughs> Be forewarned. A lot of the old songs are kind of late. Yeah. And speaking of old songs, my pick is not one of them. It's literally as new as you can get. It's Strawberry Choo Choo. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just another excuse for people to get out there and try the, the new songs, because uh, I don't know that everybody plays them. Um, you know, people may overlook them because they're not 15s or 16s or whatever. So it's true. Go go play a fun 13. Yeah, and uh, dance like an anime girl while you're doing it. Yeah, oh man, those background videos, they are mighty cute. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so as usual, um, tweet at us, po- uh, send us a message on Discord if you have uh, anything to say about the show, and uh, tell us about your set of the week and your and your kac experiences we like seeing everybody's progress and yeah check out once again kac.sfevolve.com to see the most up-to-date standings yeah follow along i'm planning on trying to qualify this weekend do it uh i've also not been playing very much so it's going to take a while for me to warm up uh i'm going to try to keep qualifying but yeah we need to get all the uh all the tap boys on the list so i'll make sure to do that soon um, all right, yeah, that's that's all we have for tonight. So uh, thanks for listening, and thank, thank you, you for, for playing. playing.